Welcome back to the Mech Tech Tech. Today we have another pre-con upgrade guide from Bloomborough featuring Family Matters, home by Zinnia Valley's Voice. Zinnia is a 1-3 flyer for Jeskai. They get powered up by each creature that has base power of one that you control, and they offer offspring to each creature that you cast. Obviously these two effects work in tandem, and there's a number of ways we could have gone with this. We could have looked for, a, you know, some powerful ETBs to abuse. Uh, we could have looked for more things that focus on tokens, which is kind of the direction we kind of went here. As always, we're going to take out 10 cards, put 10 cards in. They're going to up the synergy, up the power, have a good time with it. We do try to keep things relatively budget in these builds. We do also go over some honorable mentions that are either... Just not my top 10 or a little too expensive to recommend everyone run out and buy. Let's go over them. Starting with those 10 cards we're taking out, we have Angel of the Ruins. I actually really like Angel of the Ruins in general. I think the fact that we could offspring them is pretty great. Uh, but they are a 7 cost already, and if we want to offspring them, which we want to offspring all of our creatures, that's 9 mana. I don't feel like this deck ramps at the speed we kind of need it to in order to achieve you know, nine mana efficiently. So we're gonna go ahead and cut them over mana cost. Blade Splicer. So Blade Splicer is a one one for three. They do generate a three three golem when they enter. We could spend five to get two three three golems and two one ones, which like not bad value, but I feel like we have better ETBs out there. So we're gonna go ahead and let them go. Circuit Mender. This is another uh, creature that I actually kind of like. I actually um, have it set up to be in a Genku Future Shaper deck that I built custom. Um, but again, I just feel like there are better creatures out there, so we could let them go. Cloud Blazer kind of falls into that high mana cost, right? They're five right off the bat for a 2-2 flyer. Granted, they're going to draw us two cards, and if we pay seven, we get to offspring them. And bam! Now we're drawing four cards and getting two bodies for seven mana. So not bad, but not like as good as we could have it. Illusory Ambusher follows that up. For five mana, they are a 4-1. Whenever they're dealt damage, we draw that many cards. Uh, it's interesting, but again, with just that one booty, they're going to die from whatever damage they take. And we kind of want our 1-1s one to stick around a little longer. So they're going to go. Inferno Titan! Uh, so this guy is 6 mana right off the bat. He does have Fire Breathing. And whenever it attacks, you do get to pass out some damage. So, pretty prime candidate for the Offspring effect. But again, that mana cost is a little high. And I think we can get things that are going to get us a little bit more repeatable power over the course of this game. Inspiring Overseer is another one of those, hey, I'm going to come in, I'm going to draw you a card, and if you offspring me, you're going to get two cards. And card draw is great, you know, we love card draw here, but I think we're going to do a little better elsewhere, so they can go. Ornithopter of Paradise follows that up, and yeah, it's a Mana Dork, and yeah, Mana Dorks are good, especially if we offspring it. Right now we're getting an extra two mana, instead of just an extra one, but again, we could do better. Siege Gang Commander. Uh, so Siege Gang Commander is a 2-2 two, two for 5. He does generate 3 one, 1 bodies, which is actually, like, probably the hardest cut that I've made in this deck. Um, because, obviously, offspringing him at 7 is going to generate us, you know, 7 one, 1 bodies plus his 2-2. Two, two. Um, but cuts had to be made, and he's out. Last up is the Thopter Engineer. So Thopter Engineer is a 3-cost 1-3. When they enter, we're going to create a Thopter, and all of our artifact creatures have haste. Um, again, it's nice, but we're looking for more repeatability, so they could go. With those 10 cards out of the way, obviously we had to add in 10 cards to replace them. What are we doing? Well, let's start off with some enchantments that we're adding. Muster the Departed. So this is from Modern Horizons 3. It is a 3-cost mono-white enchantment. Right off the bat, it's going to create us a spirit. Then, at our end step, we have a morbid trigger. If we had any creature die, boom, populate. Right? 
This means that we're happy to kind of swing some like little dumpy dudes out. If they get blocked, cool. They probably died and we get to create one of our better tokens. Speaking of tokens, we have a new class from the Bloomborough set. It's Caretaker's Talent. So, boom, we have card draw. Boom, we have token generation. And boom, all of our tokens are a little bigger, a little beefier. They're going to be able to stand up, you know, chump block, deal extra damage, what have you. Caretaker's Talent is Chef's Kiss in this deck. The last of our enchantments is Assemble the Legion. So Assemble the Legion is actually super strong here. It does cost five mana, so we're not gonna get it online super, super early. But once it's online, like it's just gonna churn out more and more soldiers. They're all one ones, and they're all gonna pump our commander. After we assemble that Legion, we're actually jumping all the way up into our creatures. This is definitely a very creature focused deck in my mind with a little bit of token support splashed in there. But we're going up to the Warren War Leader. This is another creature specifically from Bloomborough. They are a 4-4 for 4, 4, 4. They already have Offspring, which means with our commander, we could actually do that twice. And whenever they attack, we get to create a rabbit or give all of our attacking creatures plus one, plus one for the turn. Having multiple of them is obviously super strong to either buff our whole board or generate us some more 1-1 one, one tokens to buff our commander. We got rid of the Siege Gang Commander for a Siege Gang Lieutenant. So for four mana, they are a 2-2. Two, two. At the beginning of combat on our turn, if we control our commander, we're gonna generate three goblins. So this is the repeatability that we're looking for, right? We don't want it to be here as a one and done. We're not doing a lot of flicker effects because flicker doesn't really work in combination with the offspring mechanic. Following up that lieutenant, we have the Nesting Dovehawk, which is the golden nightmare of the deck. So Nesting Dovehawk is a 2-2 two, two for four. They are a flyer, naturally as a dove. And at the beginning of combat on our turn, we are going to populate. And whenever we get to create a token, they're gonna get bigger. This in combination with the fact that like, if our commander's on the field, we could offspring them at six mana is so strong. Oh, we've already created a 1-1 right off of the nesting dovehawk offspring mechanic. Move to combat, we're gonna create two more of them and each time we do, all of our Nesting Dovehawks that are already on the field are getting bigger. Nesting Dovehawk, super good ad. Following that up, we have Delaney, Streetwise Lookout. So creatures with power two or less can't be blocked by creatures with power three or greater. This is gonna make a lot of our tokens pretty unblockable for the most part. And it also doubles up all of their ETB triggers and things of that nature. Kaith, Famed Mechanist is going to follow that up. There are 3-3 three, three with Fabricate 1, which could get us a nice little servo. Other non-token creatures we control have Fabricate 1. So this is actually just like a little bit more like 1-1 one, one creature strat, like for our entire board. And we could pay 2 and tap them to either populate or proliferate. In this deck, we're definitely going to be populating more so than proliferating. But Kate honestly feels kind of like, I wouldn't say a full-on backup commander, but pretty close. Anim Pakal, Thousand Moon. So she's great whenever we attack, right? Doesn't have to be with her. She's gonna get a counter and then she's gonna create a number of 1-1 one, one gnomes. Now those gnomes are tapped and attacking, but they only really need to be around for the combat to buff our commander. If they die, they die, and that's fine, because the next turn when we attack again, we're going to create even more of them. The last card added to the deck I kind of skipped over earlier, uh, but it's Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp is super strong in this deck, right? We have a ton of 1-1s. We have that Morbid Trigger from our enchantment from earlier, so we actually don't mind letting one die. We're going to replace it anyways, and it gives us card draw to keep our hand full and give us tons of options. With those 10 cards out of the way, let's move into our honorable mentions. Starting with Benny Brax, Zoologist. So Benny Brax is going to draw us a card every 
turn that we create a token. Dockside Extortionist is really just here to give us a bunch of mana. We do care about tokens in general, um, but obviously he's way too expensive to be like, yeah, everyone should run out and drop $80. I really like Guide of Souls for this deck. Really almost any of the soul people would work, but I feel like Guide of Souls is the most powerful adding in the energy mechanic, and I am the energy king. And the fact that you could then spend that energy to give one of your creatures flying a little bit of evasion that they don't normally have is the little icing on the cake. Loyal Apprentice is that kind of repeated 1-1 generation that we're looking for. They just weren't in my top 10, so they're just going to hang out here with the honorable mentions. Obviously, we're talking Mondrak, Glory Dominus, and Ogretak, Deepest Foundation for some extra token generation. Recruiter of the Guard is super strong, but they're going to tutor up some of our best creatures. Akroma's Will is a nice finisher for any game, especially a game where you're doing a token kind of go-wide strategy. Boros Charm and Root Warden Defenses are excellent ways to kind of protect your board, as well as Teferi's Protection. Uh, we are also looking at Idol of Oblivion, right? This is more card draw for generating tokens. I'm a little surprised that the deck didn't come with it. Anointed Procession, again, more token doubling. A little too expensive to tell everyone to run out and go pick it up, but it's super strong. If you have it, you should run it here. And last but not least is Song of the World Soul. So whenever you cast a spell, populate. It is six mana, but the ability to continuously populate like that is super strong. Uh, so if you have it, I'd run it. But guys, those are the upgrade guides for Family Matters from Bloomborough. If you enjoyed this content, go ahead and give me a like. Comment down below what you enjoyed about the video, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell to ensure that you never miss an episode. If you want to hang out off of YouTube, I do have a Discord. There is a link below if you want to join up. Until next time, I'm Mechanized Minion, aka the Energy King, and good luck with your builds.